I apologize for being dressed like one of the kids on the movie A Christmas Story, but I had to dress for the weather, which is around 10 degrees here in Juneau, Alaska. I remember a time not too long ago when the frozen lake that surrounds me was three quarters of its current size. That was only 25 years ago. In those days, tourists would throw their spare change into these frigid waters for kids to retrieve. Those times have changed and I would like to share with you something that I have had in my backyard before it is just a mere sliver of ice that is barely visible. Directly behind me is North America's fifth largest ice field. This massive piece of bluish tinted ice sloping downwards through the valley and into the water is known as the Menahol Glacier. So you're probably wanting to know what exactly glaciers are and why they are amazing natural creations. I'm going to share with you the history of the Menahol Glacier, the creation of glaciers and glacial recession as it relates to this particular glacier within the Juneau ice field. Let me first tell you about the history of the Menahol Glacier. In 1879, a well-known naturalist by the name of John Muir came along and decided to name this piece of ice the Ock Glacier after the Ahwan of the Klingit Indians that resided in this area. That name was later changed to the Menahol Glacier in 1892 after Thomas Corwin Menahol, whom was appointed by President Harrison as superintendent of the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey from 1889 to 1894. Mendenhall was a noted scientist and was responsible for surveying the international boundary between Canada and Alaska. According to a U.S. Forest Service website created in 2003, this ice field is ranked as one of the biggest. It blankets over 5,000 square miles. The Mendenhall Glacier is incorporated into a vast system of many other glaciers, approximately 138, of which 38 are large valley glaciers. The other 100 are smaller glaciers. There are only 19 glaciers that are notable. In April 2010, research conducted by the University of Alaska Southeast determined the estimated area of the Menahal Glacier covers 36.8 square miles. Its overall length is 13.6 miles, and its widest cross section is 3.8 miles. The Menahal Glacier is known as a terminus glacier, meaning the ice meets and calves off into the water. The terminus that is currently in contact with the water is approximately 10 to 70 feet thick and close to 3,000 feet is exposed to the Menahal Lake. If this were salt water, then it would be known as a terminus tidewater glacier. Now that we know about the history of the Menahal Glacier, let me tell you about glacial creation. According to a pamphlet published by the USDA in 2002 and available at the Menahal Glacier Visitor Center in Southeast Alaska, maritime and coastal mountains naturally create favorable conditions for glaciation. Glaciation is the term used when moist air flows towards the mountains rises and cools to release snow and rain. The average snowfall on the Juneau ice field exceeds 100 feet per year. With warmer and milder weather and reduced snowfall, it causes winter snow accumulation to exceed the summer snow melt at higher elevations, which year after year the snow will accumulate, compacting underlying snow layers from previous years into solid ice, which forms a glacier. Many people wonder why glacial ice has a bluish color to it. Believe it or not, it actually isn't blue at all. The ice absorbs all the visible colors of the light spectrum, except the color blue, which it transmits. The transmission of this blue wavelength gives glacial ice its blue appearance. Glacial ice may also appear white because some ice is highly fractured with visible air pockets and indiscriminately scatters the visible light spectrum. Now that you know about how glaciers are created, let me tell you about glacial recession as it relates to the Menhall Glacier. As early as the middle 1700s, the terminus of the Menahol Glacier extended beyond its current location by 2.9 miles. It was during this period of around 1765 that the glacier reached its glacial maximum, which means that it was no longer advancing. Just in the last 13 years since the university has been studying this movement, they have measured a recession of close to 2,000 feet, and on average a loss of over 200 feet per year. That is the reason behind the creation of the Menahol Lake. You're probably wondering why these glaciers are receding or disappearing. Over 99% of all glaciers are receding, meaning that the annual rate of snowmelt began to exceed its annual total accumulation. In Alaska, most glaciers in every mountain range and island group are experiencing significant retreat, thinning, or stagnation, especially the glaciers at lower elevations like the Mendenhall. I interviewed a U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service ranger by the name of Kate Navarro on November 15, 2010, who stated that the Mendenhall is retreating at a rate of 6 to 12 inches per day. She stated that the Menahol Glacier will be completely gone in several centuries due to the natural change in cycles in our environment. I've talked to you about the history of the Menahol Glacier, the creation of glaciers, and glacial recession. That's a lot of ground to cover in a short amount of time. I hope that I have given you a better understanding about this particular glacier and how it has a special meaning to me. 
I often wonder if glacial recession could be slowed or stopped, but unfortunately it can't. The only possibility of hope would be for snowfall to increase and the rate of melt needs to decrease. Unfortunately, current warming trends are the demise of these beautiful creations that took thousands of years to create. The only thing that I ask you is to close your eyes and remember what this one particular glacier looks like now and cherish that memory forever. Thank you.